So 2.9 percent of preeclamptics, 30 percent of the cases are antepartum sterilization of the mother and oxygen supplementation. IV frozen and diuretics. These are all very important treatment of specific complications. If there is a renal problem, a nephrologist have to treat, and if there is a liver problem, a gastroenterology person have to treat like this. It's a multidisciplinary approach, we can say. Sometimes the morphine is also used in this management of eclampsia and positioning of the patient. They should be in the left lateral position, head elevated. Otherwise, they may aspirate and uh, develop into pulmonary aspiration syndrome and suddenly we may lose the patient. Uterine displacement can happen. So the management, photo. So management of arteriguria and postpartum, normal renal and uh, respiratory function requires no treatment. Use of fruzamide or low dose dopamine with normal RFT is not recommended at all. We cannot give uh, injudicious uh, use of uh, a fruzamide, that is diuretics, lastics or fruzamide, because we have to monitor the creatine level and uric acid level, and then we have to supplement these people with the diuretics. Spontaneous diuresis occur after 24 to 48 hours delivery. Even though uh, you have not given anything also, once she delivers, the uterus is emptied. The delivery happens. Usually, there can be spontaneous diuresis. So the management of acute renal decompensation indications for hemodialysis. Sometimes these patients land with the dialysis unit because of the renal failure, persistent acidemia, hyperkalemia, volume overload, uremia, all these things are an indication of dialysis. If they don't recover from their renal output, they are all indications for the dialysis. So the new developments are increased serotonin levels in preeclamptia, serotonin-1 receptors in endothelial cells, increased uh, um, level of uh, these uh, enzymes, and uh, serotonin-2 receptor activation in endothelial cells are damaged in preeclampsia, prominent action on S2 receptors, sympathetic serotonin level receptors. So 1993 outlined the clinical preeclampsia, discussed the special problems of administration of anesthesia. These are all some of the things like, especially the anesthesia part in preeclamptic toxemia is very important because the patient is already in a very maribund condition and also she has uh, lot of pulmonary edema and aspirations are happening and she is vomiting because of the liver involvement and epigastric pain. So much depends on the expert anesthesia team to see that the help is given at the right time for these women. They will make a very key part of the treatment in preeclamptic toxemia and also eclampsia. So this is about uh, pregnancy-induced hypertension. Anything like uh, you want to understand more, you people can come out with, the, with your question. It is a very tricky subject with a lot of uh, controversial uh, theory reasons now also. And a lot of debates are conducted now also. And uh, it's utmost duty to see that we know the regimes, we know the vital signs, and we treat them at the right time in the right place is very important. Thank you one and all.